Oh my God, look at the size of this lens. The magnification of this camera is absolutely ridiculous. In today's video, we're gonna do something that might seem quite silly. We're gonna compare what a $600 camera can see in our night sky versus a $600 state-of-the-art telescope. Now I know that might sound quite absurd, but this is no ordinary camera. This is the Nikon P1000. Its focal length varies from 24 millimeters which is the same as what this camera has right now, all the way up to 3,000 millimeters. So this camera can see six times further than this telescope. But as we know, size isn't everything. Behind me right now is the largest planet in our solar system. That bright point of light behind me is Jupiter. That is going to be our first test subject. I'm gonna take images with both the camera and the telescope and determine which of these is better. But we have one small issue. And that is that we're in England, where it is very cold and, as you can tell, very cloudy. So what we're going to do instead is I'm going to fly a thousand miles away to a warm Italian city known as Pisa. I can't feel my toes and this is astronomical. Okay, so I'm here in Pisa trying to get the greatest shot of the entire documentary. I booked this gorgeous room that has a view straight onto the tower and using a super long lens camera, I intend to record a segment in which I'm talking to the camera despite being really far away. It will seem like I'm pretty close, but then all of a sudden I zoom out and pan round to my room to continue with the rest of the segment in what I hope will look really cool. Sounds easy enough to do by yourself in a foreign country? Yeah, of course it does. So right now on the top of the tower, but if we zoom all the way in, we should be able to see the setup inside. I think you just got a glimpse there of the extra camera and gimbal. Fantastic, I doubt they're recording anymore. But as I've already learned so many times before, shooting scenes solo is pretty much always a disaster. You see, I missed my mark completely. I ended up standing well too far to the right of where I needed to be. And therefore, all you can really see with the Nikon P1000 is my right arm. Awesome. Had I have stood in the right spot though, the shot would have continued on and looked a little like this. Okay, so we now know there are other galaxies in our universe. So the next question is then, where does it end? Where does the universe end? So let's find out. 10 out of 10 for effort, 2 out of 10 for application. Although I did immediately clock on to the fact that the Nikon P1000 wasn't actually pointed at me, I didn't feel like spending another $25 to go back up to the top of the tower and record this again. But I did use this time to showcase the immense zoom capabilities of this unique camera. But in order to put it to a real test, I was going to need to wait until night time to use it. This way, I could point the camera towards objects that were a little less local. Instead of zooming in on subjects 200 meters away, how about 1.6 billion kilometers? That's a billion miles away. First up, at 800 million kilometers away, is the largest planet in our solar system, Jupiter. If you're watching this right now and you're thinking, I'd love to go out and see Jupiter for myself, but I just wish it wasn't as light polluted where I live, don't worry about it, because light pollution will not stop you from seeing the largest planet in our solar system. You can see it in central London, you can see it in central Pisa. The only thing that's going to stop you is clouds. Thankfully right now we don't have many clouds, so we can see the planet Jupiter behind us. It's very easy to find in the night sky because it's one of the brightest things you will see. Okay, so this is gonna be a real test of how steady my hands are because in order to make sure I can see Jupiter with such a long lens, I'm gonna to have to keep this very still. So let's give it a shot. I'm gonna point it up towards Jupiter and I'm gonna zoom in. I can see Jupiter. I can see the bright point of light. I'm gonna zoom in. And I can see one moon, two. Yeah, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a still from that video so you can see it better. In both of the shots I originally took, I had overexposed the video so that you could see the four dimmer points of light that are Jupiter's four Galilean moons. But it also washed out any of the visible detail on Jupiter's surface. When I reduced the exposure, I could just faintly make out the bands on Jupiter, as well as its great red spot. Next up is the second largest planet in our solar system, which also happens to be many people's favourite. I'm pointing my camera, not my telescope, I'm pointing my camera towards this bright point of light peeking from behind the Leaning Tower of Pisa. 
This is what myself and many of us refer to as a gem of our solar system, the famous ringed planet Saturn. And I'm just going to take a snapshot just there because the video itself was very shaky. And that is our zoom maxed out. That's the limit we can see with this camera, which to be honest, as far as technology has come, that is phenomenal. The amount of detail we can make out with just this. This camera cost me just over $600. So an absolute bargain. It is in used condition, but it's phenomenal what we can see with just this. And I can assure you that Galileo and Huygens would have absolutely killed for something that was capable of doing this. Okay, so in my right hand, we have the Nikon P1000 and to my left, we have the William Optics Zenith Star 66 millimeter telescope. Its focal length is 460 millimeters compared to the Nikon P1000, which can go all the way to 3000 millimeters and then even further with four times digital zoom. Incredible, but can it produce better quality images than this telescope? In comparison, the Zenith Star can achieve a much sharper and cleaner image whilst the Nikon P1000's higher magnification allows it to resolve Jupiter's four largest moons much more clearly. So as we can see from the pictures of Jupiter, it appears a lot smaller in the field of view with the telescope. We are having to use a camera through the telescope itself. So there's a massive trade-off already. The camera I'm using, I'm trying to keep it as low cost as possible because then this isn't really a fair challenge. So I'm using a Canon 550D, which has a dodgy screen. I got it very cheap because the LCD screen doesn't work but I can still take pictures with it and that's good enough for me. I can still see through the eyepiece as well what I'm looking at. So I've tried to keep this as close to $600 as possible without going too far beyond it. This can shoot 4K. This can take very high resolution photos as opposed to the Canon 550D, which at its best shoots 1080p. Already this has taken four times higher resolution videos than this setup is. So it's slightly handicapped by the fact that this is built in, but that's part of what makes this so incredible. So the images we see through it are very good, but in comparison to Nikon P1000, not as good. So what can we do about this telescope to make it up to scratch against a camera? Well, it's very simple. We increase the magnification. The focal length is 460 millimeters, which we know is inferior compared to the 3000 millimeters and four times digital zoom of Nikon P1000. So we're gonna introduce something that will increase the magnification. We're gonna add something called a Barlow lens. Now there's lots of different variations of this. You can have two times, three times, four times, five times bio lenses. You can have all sorts that increase the magnification by a set amount. You can even have ones that reduce it so you get a wider field of view as opposed to a more zoomed in picture. So we are going to add a very high magnification bio lens. We're going to add a five times Barlow lens. Now we're cooking. Details such as Jupiter's bands can now be made out with ease. Increasing the magnification leads to a drop in brightness of our image, but that's okay because planets are very bright anyway. The telescope certainly provides a greater sharpness than a Nikon camera, but let's just remind ourselves that with absolutely no accessories, the Nikon P1000 can achieve images like this. The detail you can make out of the craters on the moon is very impressive from just a camera. I did also find time to point it at Mars, which, although it is a lot closer than the gas giants, Jupiter and Saturn, it is a lot smaller. If we're being generous, you could say that with some squinting, we can make out the tiniest bit of surface detail on the red planet. If we're being critical, then it's just a red smudge. Now it's time to address the elephant in the room. This is an incredible telescope, but it is not intended for planetary imaging, which is to say, its purpose is not to observe really small but bright points of light. Instead, it's great at taking lengthy exposures of dim but large objects in our night sky, such as the Andromeda Galaxy. Here's another image I took with a telescope of the great globular cluster in Hercules, the Triangulum Galaxy, and perhaps my favourite shot, the Horsehead and Flame Nebula magnificent. So looking beyond the planets, the moons and any very bright star clusters like the Pleiades, this camera is very limited. It can't see much else or produce much detail. 
the telescope absolutely wipes the floor with it when it comes to observing any other object in our night sky. So in order to make this a fairer contest, I sold the Zenith Star Telescope and swapped it for a much more appropriate comparison. This is an 8-inch Celestron Newtonian Telescope mounted onto a CG5 go-to mount. It is one of the first astrophotography setups I ever owned due to its cheap cost and surprising capabilities. It is a worthy comparison since the cost of this setup was very similar to the Nikon P1000 camera. Okay, so there it is. This is my new telescope setup. It was listed on eBay for £550, which is about $600, and is already a very good deal. This stunning view shows an incredible amount of detail. The shadows being cast by the craters and mountains are easily visible, and better yet, with the addition of a Barlow lens, we can see well beyond the capabilities of even the Nikon camera. I was still using a Canon 550D to image with, and although it did produce some excellent shots of the moon and some semi-decent shots of the Orion Nebula, when it came to the planets like Jupiter, it struggled to produce a decent shot. You unfortunately cannot adjust the exposure when recording video with this camera. So from the beginning, we knew this was gonna happen, but if you are using it for astronomy and stargazing, the telescope wins hands down because of the variety of images you can see. If you're looking at the planets and the moon, I'd lean more towards this, of course, but anything else, the telescope triumphs dramatically. But that's because this isn't designed for stargazing. This isn't designed for looking at star clusters. It's just designed to be a camera. And it does a fantastic job of that. So I will let you argue in the comments over which one you'd rather have in terms of multi-purpose uses. But when it comes to observing the planets, I'd say the $600 camera beats the $600 telescope. And that is no small feat. I'm Damon Scotting, and this was Astronomical. Thank you.